Welcome to the Park City Market Talk webinar. I'm Ron Wilstein, a broker at Keller Williams Luxury Properties Worldwide. And I'm Jeremy Wilstein, the buyer consultant for the Wilstein team. And we're here to share our October 2014 Park City Market Talk webinar. Well, let's just jump right into things right away because there's been a lot of news around the Park City Mountain Resorts. And uh, we'll start out with uh, giving you a summary of what we're going to cover in this webinar. Ski Magazine was released and Park City's three resorts made their top ranking resort list. Then we're going to talk about, as we have been covering for some time, the battle of the resorts. We're happy to announce that it is over and we'll give you all the details. And then we're going to give you the Park City real estate market update and talk about sales and prices and where we're going. And then we're happy to announce that Deer Valley recently acquired Solitude Mountain Resort and we'll give you the breaking news on that. and. More will follow in months to come. So let's jump right into it. Ski Magazine announced their new 2015 Best Ski Resort rankings. We're looking particularly at the Western United States area and Park City's three resorts made the list. So Deer Valley was ranked number two on Ski Magazine's 2015 top ranking, excuse me, Western Ski Resorts. It's good to note that they received number one rankings for grooming service, on-mountain food, lodging, dining, and kid-friendly activities. Park City Mountain Resort came in seventh in the rankings. It received number two rankings for the terrain park and the amenities, particularly for the kids, and number three ranking for the Apre ski scene. Uh, everybody loves the Park City Marketplace and the nightlife. And then finally, Canyons was ranked number 14. It's 4,000 skiable acres and 21 lifts accessed a lot of terrain. And now Vail's Epic Pass is a favorite for ski and snowboarders. And with Park City going to be added to the Epic, Epic Pass this year and in 2015-2016, there's going to be a big merger with the two resorts. Yep, lots will be changing for next year. Other resorts in Utah that also ranked in the top 30 included Snowbird that came in 21st, Alta 28th, Solitude 29th, newly acquired by Deer Valley, as we'll give you the details, and Snowbird 30th. So Utah Resorts did very well in this ranking, uh, as they historically do. But let's talk about the Vail Resort acquiring the Park City Mountain Resort. And of course, this has been big news for a number of months. We've covered it in past webinars, and uh, it's nice to have this finally resolved and good news for the whole town. So we want to take a little stroll down memory lane to uh, bring the story to a closure because we finally do have a, a conclusion to this epic battle that happened yep. the last couple of years. Um, so for years the resort has been operated by Park City Mountain Resort known as PCMR by the Cumming family. The Cummings, family, uh, Cummings company Powder Corp had a lease with United Park City Mines to pay $155,000 a year to run a ski resort on its land and that was uh, agreed upon many, many, many years ago. Back in the old mining days, before the snow was falling, and that was the uh, treasure of the Park City area. Well, the snow was falling. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> well, there was an option to renew that lease at that same rate all the way through to 2051. All Park City Mountain Resort had to do was notify them in writing by the April 30th, 2011 deadline. They must have been busy on April 30th. They had to be because, uh, and it was Park City, uh, United Park City Mines transferred their rights, their land rights to Talisker Land Holdings in 2003, making Talisker the new landlord and the recipient of this lease renewal notice. So their renewal date came and went without Park City Mountain Resort renewing its lease. They just forgot to renew the lease. So this gave Talisker the right to find a much higher paying tenant and uh, Powder Corp, they falsely claimed that they had renewed the lease on time and this led to a multi-year legal battle between PCMR and their landlord Talisker. The next year Talisker announced it was leasing Canyons Resort to Vail for $25 million, quite a difference from the $155,000 uh, a year that uh, was part of the old lease with the United Park City Mines. In any event, as part of that deal, Vail also would take uh, would get to take over the Park City Mountain Resort property, either as the landlord or the land operator, depending upon the outcome of the pending case. So Talisker served Park City Mountain Resort with an eviction notice 
and in response, PCMR threatened to dismantle all the lifts if evicted. So this, this battle, kind of a pissing match really, went back and forth and soon everyone in Park City started to fear the worst that could Park City Mountain Resort possibly not open for the 2014-2015 season? That was certainly on the minds of the mayor and the employees and the business owners because that would have a huge economic impact. They were predicting the uh, impact would have been around $185 million. So everybody was paying very close attention and wishing and hoping and trying to do everything in their power to get these two sides to uh, come to some agreement. Well, Judge Ryan Harris of the 3rd District Court ruled that PCMR would have to post a bond to postpone its eviction and secure the opening of the resort for the 2014-2015 ski season. Park City Mountain Resort proposed that the amount of the bond should be somewhere between a million dollars and six million dollars. Talisker felt differently. They argued that it should be 124 million. <laughs> so Judge Hall Harris ultimately ruled that the amount would be 17.5 million and on September 9th, PCMR agreed to post the bond. And just two days later, PCMR announced that it agreed to sell the lower portion of the mountain, along with the lifts, the parking lots, and all the snowmaking equipment, to Vail Resorts for $182.5 million. So just two days later, after the bond was posted, agreement came, and the battle was finally over, and now Vail controls two of the three world-class resorts in Park City. So Vail came in and within two years, maybe two and a half years, now controlled two out of three mountains. Wow. So what does this mean? First of all, this acquisition settled all that litigation and ensures that no disruption to the resort's operation for this upcoming season, to which that news was met with lots of cheers. <laughs> we are going to be open. We're going to be skiing those mountains. Vail intended to connect, and Vail also intends to connect PCMR and the canyons for the 2015-2016 ski season to create the largest ski, single ski resort in the United States with 7,000 skiable acres. So we've got Park City Mountain Resort with about 3,300, and Canyons the biggest in Utah with 4,000, and now they're going to combine. It's going to be big. The Vail's Epic Pass will be good both at PCMR as well as Canyons Resort for this upcoming ski season. So that pass will get you on a lot of terrain. Good news is all the PCMR employees will be working this season. And this, as I mentioned before, this will save an estimated $180 million to Park City's economy. So a big, big deal. So when will the resort be opening? Thanksgiving 2014. Weather permitting, snow permitting. <laughs> as always. So what does this mean for the Park City real estate market? Some property owners hope that this will increase the value of their property. Vail's improvements to Park City Mountain Resort will likely make the resort better overall and more popular to vacationers and nearby property owners. So will Vail's operations of PCMR increase Park City property values overall? Well, when I think about that question, I think back to uh, the Olympics and the bid process for the 2002 Salt Lake Winter Olympic Games. Uh, property owners felt that us being awarded the games would instantly increase values. In fact, I remember back then that some property owners would increase their list prices by fifty to hundred thousand dollars immediately. And we would try to explain to them, well, as much as we're excited about the Salt Lake Games and all that's going to come to Park City, there's going to be a two-week event in seven years from now. And you just can't raise the value instantly because of that. Well. The Olympic Games did eventually uh, help the Park City real estate market really 18 months after the Games. But I, I sort of see this Vail uh, operation of PCMR in a similar fashion that the news is good. Overall, it can help but make the resort a better place. And certainly properties that are nearby, maybe at the base of the resorts, may be impacted because now it's the largest resort in the United States and all these improvements will be coming. But I just don't see it hugely impacting the overall marketplace. Love it to be the case. It's only good news, but I don't think it will necessarily impact our single family residents, neighborhoods. Um, just don't think that's likely to happen. So I uh, don't want to overstate it. It is good news. Uh, I think it will help the town overall, but I don't think it will have a huge impact upon real estate values.
Speaking of real estate values, let's give our Park City market update right now. So there were 1,309 sales in Park City over the past 12 months. Again, that's homes, condos, and vacant land combined. So we're actually down 5% or 73 sales from the year before. When we look at it and break it down by homes, condominiums, and lots, and we're of course going back looking at 12 months from October 2013 to September 2014, that's the red bar, and the blue bar is the 12 month period right before that. Home, the number of sales of homes is down by 14% from 584 sales to 505. The condominium is slightly down by 1% from 594 down to 586, just 8 sales. Uh, but loss, as you can see, is up 8% from 204 up to 220 for this last 12 month period. And then we're going to take a closer look at home sales. So uh, the Park City, we're talking about Park City city limits, and then Snyderville Basin is just outside. So kind of that big, wide, iconic bar in the Canyons Resort out of town is the Snyderville Basin. So inside the city limits, we're actually down 19% in our year-to-year -year home sales, from 201 sales to 162. And then we're also down 11% in Snyderville Basin from 383 to 341. Some people might ask, well, isn't the real estate market hot? The real estate market is hot. We just don't have much inventory. And you're going to see that other side of the coin when we start talking about prices. That's right. But let's move on to condominiums in terms of the number of transactions. Inside the city limits, down by 9% from 365 transactions the year before to 332. Uh, however, in the Snyderville Basin, we're seeing the activity picking up, of course the supply is greater as well, rising by 11% from 229 transactions to 254. And then taking a look at lot sales, inside the city limits we're down 30% from 56 sales to 39. Again, there's very little vacant land in, in the city limits. And you can see in the Snyderville Basin there's more inventory, we're up 22% with our sales from 148 to 181 land sales, so people are buying land and building homes. That's right. <clears throat> Looking at the time on the market, we always like to evaluate this particularly with homes. Uh, the number of days on the market is actually down from a year ago uh, by 13 days, and again that just means that there's buyers out there when the right property comes on the market, it sells pretty quickly if it's priced correctly. Speaking of prices, what is happening in terms of our property values? We're now looking at the homes, and uh, this is pretty impressive. Uh, the homes are up by 8% within the city limits from 1,205,000 being the median sold price of single family homes up to 1,300,000. Nice appreciation. Snyderville Basin, we see it up about 2% from the median price of 708,000 to 720,750. Uh, taking a look at condo median sold prices inside the city limits, we're actually up 8% from 507,250 to 546,950. And in Snyderville Basin, we're up a healthy 10% from 315 up to uh, 345,000. And on lots now in the city, uh, down slightly by 8% from 600,000 being the median sold price to 550. Again, our sampling is pretty small here, so I wouldn't make a big, uh, large conclusion from this. Snyderville Basin, more lot sales occurring out there. Uh, property values increasing by 12%, median price rising from 290000 to 323500 Now let's go on to our newest, latest news. Uh, Deer Valley Resort acquires Solitude Mountain Resort. It's like a soap opera. Ski Utah industry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Can, uh, news does not stand still in Utah for the ski industry. It <laughs> so, really is quite amazing. <laughs> so on October 3rd, Deer Valley Resort announced that they had entered into agreement to purchase Solitude Resort, and they will begin operating the resort on May 1st, 2015. So if you do follow the news closely, uh, Solitude almost got bought by Brighton a couple months ago, and I believe Brighton's financing fell through. So Deer Valley picked up this opportunity and snatched up Solitude. I want to buy a ski resort too. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give you a couple facts about this and then uh, we'll show you where you can get more information. Uh, one question that people are asking, why did Deer Valley purchase Solitude? 
Uh, the Deer Valley has always been committed to the uh, real estate market, particularly in Utah. They saw it as an opportunity to uh, provide services at a greater level, and so they, they jumped on this opportunity to operate that resort as well. Yeah, they jumped on the ski resort opportunity there. Yep. Um, how much did Deer Valley pay for the Solitude Mountain Resort? Well, this was a private acquisition, so unlike the Vail deal where they needed to announce it to their shareholders, um, Deer Valley did not, so the, the, it's an undisclosed price. Uh, how will the purchase change the experience at Solitude? Um, <clears throat> well, we think that it's going to be definitely an improvement. Um, as we move into this upcoming season, we're expecting it to operate as usual, uh, but as uh, Deer Valley has an opportunity to evaluate it closely. We suspect that there will be some changes that will be around the corner, but right now they're announcing uh, operating as usual for this upcoming season. Yeah, and Deer Valley employees are going to go over to Solitude and kind of shadow the Solitude employees so they can get a sense of how the uh, resort operates and what changes they might want to make. That's right. So will snowboarding still be available at Solitude? Yes, of course. They're still going to allow snow, uh, snowboarding at Solitude, and Solitude is going to keep keep most of its identity. Uh, will it become a mini Deer Valley, people are asking. <clears throat> Deer Valley's intention isn't to uh, strip away the brand that Solitude has, has developed over the years. Uh, they do, of course, have absolutely wonderful services and they want to bring that to the resort, but they don't want to make it a mini Deer Valley. It's going to have its own identity and continue in that fashion. And will there be a reciprocal arrangement for skiing benefits between Solitude and Deer Valley Resort? At least this year, if you have a full season, res uh, full season pass at either resort, you're going to get four day passes at the other resort. If you have a midweek pass, you'll get two days at the other resort. So that's the arrangement for this year. Maybe next year it might change. That's right. We'll see what happens. And then finally for our questions today, Will Deer Valley bring more capital and marketing investment to Solitude? They're taking the next six months to look very carefully at that operation, look at the numbers, and uh, strategically figure out what is best to enhance that resort. So we expect that they will make improvements, but nobody really knows what they are at this point in time. Well, to get more answers to frequently asked questions about this sale, we've created a link on our website. If you go to the wellsteamteam.com, forward slash DV buys solitude. Uh, it will take you actually to a copy of the press release that Deer Valley put out where they answered a lot more, a lot, many more questions and in greater detail. And so you may check that out if that's of interest to you. All right, well, this brings us to the end of our October 2014 Park City Market Talk webinar. If you have any questions, as always, you can send us emails and we'll promptly reply at Ron. Jeremy, and Ed, Ed or Dean. And the Wilstein team. Uh, we will update our next Market Talk webinar on November 12th. We update it always on the second Tuesday of the month, and so you can always go there and get the latest news or go back in time to our web, web our webinar archives. Web, 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 web. <laughs> and uh, you can watch uh, other topics that we've covered and see uh, how we've addressed those issues. So from Park City, we're signing off. Um, start tuning your skis, it won't be long before the snow falls and we're on the mountain again. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.